All right, in this tutorial, we're going to take a look at a little different style of editing, a drag and drop style of editing. And uh, this is a kind of editing style that I picked up uh, when I made the switch from Avid Software to Adobe Premiere uh, back, uh, oh, I think it was somewhere around the year 2001. I made that switch and uh, I found that uh, it was very freeing and, and it made my work a, a lot less tedious and uh, allowed me to have more options and freedom uh, in my edit sessions. And uh, so I adopted this style. And But uh, when uh, Adobe changed their software from Adobe Premiere to Adobe Premiere Pro, they uh, failed to have a good bin structure. And so I was forced to leave the uh, Adobe software for editing purposes and uh, had to seek out something else. I went back to Avid uh, at first and uh, tried it out again, bought the software and everything, but found that they did not allow me to do this drag and drop. And uh, so I started looking elsewhere and found the Edius software and was delighted to discover that it not only had the bin structure that uh, Premiere Pro was missing, but it also allowed for my drag and drop style that uh, Avid software did not. And uh, so I quickly adopted the Edia software, uh, appreciated the real time effects that it had even back there in, in the early years and uh, have been editing with it ever since. So let's go ahead and show you how you can do drag and drop style editing. Some uh, people might be asking the question, uh, does Edius even allow you to still do the drag and drop now that it's become more like Avid software? Have they taken that away on us? And just to assure you that uh, it is still possible, let's uh, take a couple of clips here. Maybe first of all, let's just collapse our timeline here. Okay, so what we wanted to show is that yes, indeed, it is still possible to do a drag and drop. For those of you that might be concerned that we've lost that feature uh, in Edia 6 as Grass Valley has uh, redesigned it to become more like Avid. And uh, so let's just go ahead and take uh, this clip here that we have already in our play window and show you how you can indeed continue to do drag and drop. Let's just grab a hold of this. Instead of using this little button here to send our media to our timeline, let's just grab a hold of it with our mouse and drag it down to our timeline. And we see that wherever we point the clip to, if we point it, if we point the video to uh, video track one, that that's where it goes. If we were to lift this up and point the video to the graphics track, that's where it would land. If we wanted it to land up in video track three, uh, we, we notice that uh, you can do that. By just letting your mouse go, we see that it lands up in video track three. And we see that the audio has uh, also moved. Whenever you moved it, let's just uh, maybe grab this again. You notice that when you point the video to video one, that uh, the audio goes to audio one. If you lift this up and point it to video two, that the audio goes to audio two, and so on. And uh, if that is not where you want the audio to go, you can just simply point to the audio clip and bring it and place it up wherever you want it to. And the same with the video for that matter. Okay, so it is possible to do drag and drop. And, and notice that we're doing this even though the video track is mapped to track one, the indicator there is on track one, and the audio track is on track one. Notice that without changing those, we can select different tracks and drop them wherever we want. And that's important and, and great and wonderful. I don't believe Avid Software allows you to do that unless they've really changed their philosophy. And we'll show you how uh, that can help in an edit session and can save you some steps. Uh, you can slap together a timeline a little faster, I believe, and uh, with a lot less uh, tedium. So let's go ahead and uh, rebuild that first minute or so of our timeline. Let's maybe open up our audio tracks so we can see what we're doing a little better here. All right, uh, so here we are, right about the 10 minute mark. And the first thing we wanna do is put down our black mat. So let's find our graphics bin, find our black mat. And instead of dragging it to our uh, play window, we're just gonna go ahead and drag it right down to our timeline. And uh, if we feel that that uh, isn't quite enough, I think by default, um, the black is set to five seconds. 
or the still clips are set to five seconds. So if we want to drag that out uh, so we have uh, 10 or 12, 15 seconds of black, we can do that just by grabbing a hold of the end and sliding it across, trimming it out. Okay, so now we can go after our title. And again, uh, we can just uh, drag that down to the timeline and place it on the video track two. Even though our video is still uh, mapped to track one, we can, as you can see, just place it right where we want it to go on uh, video track two in the graphics track. So now we have our graphics uh, fading on. We still want to go in and manually uh, do our dissolve out. Let's maybe expand our track a little bit. And uh, so we can go in and set our node there and uh, slide the end down so that we've got a nice dissolve out. And right now we probably have too much black after the title fades off, so let's just slide that over. And we're ready to go after our music. So let's just uh, maybe make this a little smaller so we can see our audio tracks a little better, maybe collapse uh, the interview track and the voiceover track so that we can see our music track better. And go find our music. I believe this is the one here. And again, we don't have to bring it into our play monitor. We can simply drag and drop it and place it right down where we want it to go without taking the time to go ahead and slide down uh, our indicator here to the, uh, to the audio track for. We can just leave it right where it is and simply point that clip down to where we want it to go and drop it. Remember, we want to do that little dissolve up of the music. Okay, so we're ready for our first clip. And uh, I believe that was over in this bin here. And uh, notice that uh, we, we can now start going one of two directions. We could continue to just drag these clips down to the timeline and kind of edit them right on the timeline. Uh, you will quickly discover that you can preview clips just as easily on the timeline as you can in the play window and uh, find that portion that you want to use very easily by trimming it down and then just dragging it over and you've got your first edit. If that's not long enough, we remember we had to do kind of a slow-mo effect here to uh, make that clip work, but uh, let's just keep moving uh, on for now and uh, find our next clip. I believe it was the boys splashing in the pond, right? Now notice that just because we like drag and drop doesn't mean that we will always just continue to drag clips down to the timeline. Some clips might be very long and you end up uh, you know, having a long clip on the timeline, it might be more convenient in many cases just to, you know, continue to double click and bring them into the play window and finding your in and out points over here. But once you've got your in and out points set here, rather than take the time to figure out, uh, okay, where do we want this to start and set an in point or set your timeline indicator uh, where you want it to go, and you know, and make sure that your tracks are mapped to the appropriate tracks each time you place an edit or each time you make an edit. Uh, well, you can simply, once you have your clip defined in your play window with an in and out, now you can do the drag and drop method uh, right from the play window. And so what you do is just take your mouse and point up into the play window, uh, hold down your left mouse button and start dragging it to the timeline window. And you can see at this point, uh, you still have the option of placing it uh, really wherever you want. You could place it right up to the cursor, or you could place it at the end of the clip and, and let your mouse go and it goes wherever. So it gives you a little bit more flexibility as to where you place it. Okay, we throw on our dissolve. We see that uh, the uh, dissolve only dissolves out, and that again is because we're right up against the end of that clip. And uh, so it can only, the new clip can only dissolve uh, back into the old clip. Let's maybe go ahead and do our effect real quick here. Change this to uh, slow-mo. Speed it to, I think we had it at 30%. And uh, now we'll have lots of room to make a dissolve and the shot will be more steady. Let's see, maybe I'm going to drag that out a little bit. Oh, 
out there. And uh, go after our next shot. I believe it is in Scenic. All right, and again, uh, once we've got an in and out defined that uh, we're happy with, uh, we can just go ahead and uh, drag that to the timeline. And again, if it's just way too much video that came down, you could undo that and uh, take the time to uh, play out your clip a little bit and get uh, more like uh, three or four seconds of the clip and set your out point. And uh, throw on a dissolve. And uh, now we're ready for our interview, Gal. Yeah, this is what we decided that we liked. It's about this much here. Now, notice uh, that our audio is not landing on the correct track. Uh, if we had wanted it to land on uh, video track two, uh, where the interviews are supposed to land, what we would, uh, well, there's several different ways we could handle that. We, we could simply drag that audio down to track two. But uh, just because we're drag and drop fools doesn't mean that we won't necessarily take advantage of the new features that Edius has given to us. And uh, so let's just go ahead and, and, uh, and uh, use this uh, mapped track uh, concept and tell Edius that we do want to uh, send our audio down to the interview track. So let's just slide this down to our audio track. Let me just open that up. And uh, so now, even though we're doing the drag and drop method, uh, because we've taken the time to move our designators here, our indicators of where we want the uh, audio to go, we notice that even though we're still using the drag and drop method, that the audio is now going to the appropriate track. And our, again, our audio, uh, music audio is just a little hot there and overshadows the girl. So let's bring that audio down. And uh, then after we hear her for a little bit, we want to bring her audio down. Probably too much. It's kind of nice just to hear still just a little hint of the, the native speaker. And uh, so now we can go after our voiceover talent. And uh, again, let's maybe open up our uh, voiceover track a little bit. Again, we don't have to uh, necessarily take the time to slide this down to the voiceover track and you know set your endpoint and use the uh, overwrite to timeline. We can simply, you know, just leaving that back where it was at interviews, we can simply grab a portion of this voiceover and with our mouse, slide it down and point it right to where we want it to start. And uh, remember, we have to bring that audio up a little bit. Hi, my name is Danny. I live in a small village in the central part of Cambodia. I have two brothers. Okay, so now we have to go after the two brothers. Here again, we might uh, take the time to slide this back to uh, the first audio track, the ambient audio track, so that when we drag and drop it into place, the audio will be going to the appropriate track. So I have two brothers and one little sister. Let's find the sister, how oh, she's already here. So you maybe want to pick it up about there. Pick it up about here. And again, just drag that down to the timeline. One little sister. We all live together here. And our next clip. Uh, again, we can um, 
without having to take the time to define all of these three points. Oh, that's way too much. Let's just grab this more like about there. Uh, we can either set it at the end of the clip if we think we want that much of the two girls clapping, or we can bring it back to about here. We all live together here with our parents on a small farm that we share with my grandfather. And uh, if you decide that you wanted maybe just a little bit more of that clapping, well, you can always go in and do a trim. And uh, as you pull out more of the uh, clapping shot, you uh, take away some of the uh, wider establishing with shot. Parents on a small farm. Here with our parents on a small farm that we share with my grandfather. Okay, well that gives you a good idea of uh, the drag and drop method and how you can use it to maybe save yourself a few steps along the way as you're making your edit. But uh, everyone has their own preference and uh, if you uh, like to be very precise in your editing, uh, you may want to uh, steer more towards the uh, three-point style editing and uh, be very deliberate about your edit points and edit decisions. Uh, but if you're kind of more of a freeform style person, uh, you might uh, find that the, at least knowing about the drag and drop method will save you some steps. And in the end, uh, you might indeed uh, uh, incorporate uh, portions of both. For example, if I wanted to now go back and replace this clip uh, like we did last time with the sunset or the sunrise shot, let's go find that shot. bring it into our play window. Uh, what I could do if I wanted to continue to do the drag and drop method uh, is I could go and select that click, delete it, leave a blank hole, and uh, select uh, a stable portion of the sunrise shot and set an in point and take a little bit of it, set an out point and drag it into place. But we'll notice that uh, it's difficult to get uh, to be precise and to get the exact amount. We see that it's kind of overlapping our interview shot here a little bit and uh, so what we'd have to do is throw it back into the play window and uh, drag this back a little bit so the out point isn't so far out and then drag it back to our timeline and uh, then stretch it out. That would be the drag and drop method. If we wanted to uh, kind of incorporate both methods into our edit style what we might do, let's just undo all this. What we might do, even though we're in the drag and drop mode and the drag and drop philosophy, we will occasionally just go ahead and uh, decide that we want to use the three point style method to uh, accomplish some tasks more precisely and more efficiently. And uh, in this case, I might do that. I might go ahead and select my in point of the clip, my out point of the clip and make sure that I've cleared my out point on the play side and then just go ahead and uh, use the button to fill or replace the clip. Add my dissolves back in and I replaced it. So as you develop your own style, you may want to incorporate uh, portions of both methods depending on the type of task that you want to perform. Okay, well I believe that's it for drag and drop.